In this second section, now we will talk about endo endoscopic sinus surgery. We will discuss what are the indications of endoscopic sinus surgery and what are some contraindications when we should not perform endoscopic sinus surgery. What is the anesthesia used for this uh, sinus surgery and also the position of the patient in which we can perform endoscopic sinus surgery and some uh, complications after the procedure and post-operative care and management. So endoscopic sinus surgery is a minim minimally invasive surgery and does not require skin incision or removal of intervening bone to access the disease. So it's minimally invasive. We, co we do not require the uh, incision of the skin. Just by the endoscope insertion procedure can be performed and we do not require any removal of the intervening bone to access the disease. The indications of the disease uh, of the endoscopic sinus surgery procedure is uh, if there is chronic bacterial sinusitis, if it's a chronic bacterial sinusitis, if the condition is not improving or if there is a, a recurrent uh, condition and it uh, persists for a longer period of time, we need to do, we need to intervene by the uh, sinus surgery. So chronic sinusitis, recurrent acute bacterial sinusitis, uh, polypoid rhinosinitis, if the polyps develop Polypi polypoid uh, rhinosinusitis, we need to perform the, uh, the surgery, endoscopic sinus surgery. Fungal sinusitis with fungal ball or nasal polyp. Uh, Antrochoanal polyp. Mucosal or frontoethmoidal or sphenoid sinus. Control of apistaxis by endoscopic cautery, removal of foreign body from the nose or sinus and septoplasty. All these are the indications in which we can perform the sinus surgery. And if you see, most of the indications are uh, like presence of polyps or mucosils. If there are growths present, the polyps needs to be removed by the endoscopic sinus surgery. And also if there is chronic sinusitis or recurrent bacterial sinusitis, we need to perform the endoscopic sinus surgery. Presence of epistaxis bleeding from the nose uh, and then foreign body present in the nose or the sinus and septoplasty which is the repair of the septum. All these procedures can be uh, treated or managed by the sinus surgery. Now, what are some contraindications? What are the conditions in which we should not perform the uh, endoscopic sinus surgery? Uh, inexperience and lack of proper instrumentation is one contraindication. Don't try if the experts are not available and proper instruments are not available. Disease inaccessible by endoscopic procedure. If the disease is beyond the excess or beyond the reach of endoscope, we should not perform the procedure. Osteomyelitis of the bones. Threaten intracranial or intraorbital complication. If there is a threat that it might lead to orbital or intracranial complications, we should not perform the procedure. The anesthesia which is used, general anesthesia is preferred for this technique. 
Local anesthesia with IV sedation used in adults when limited work is to be done. So general anesthesia is the preferred anesthesia, but it can be done under the local IV sedation if uh, limited work need to be done. Supine prone position again, supine patient facing up, prone on the stomach, face down. Patient lies flat in supine position with head resting on a ring or head rest. Some also prefer to raise the head to about 15 degrees, slightly elevated head. Now the post-operative care of the patient after the endoscopic sinus surgery, removal of nasal packs at the time of discharge 24 hours after the operation. So by the time the patient is being discharged from the hospital, about 24 hours after the procedure, the nasal packs needs to be removed. Antibiotics, uh, an intraoperative intravenous antibiotic, which is amoxiclav or cephalosporine can be used, which is continued oral, orally for 7 to 10 days. So intraoperative to prevent the infections, uh, intraoperative antibiotics IV are used, but later on we should continue the oral antibiotics for 7 to 10 days. Uh, antihistaminics like uh, for allergic patients who have allergies in antihistamines can be used. Analgesics for any pain uh, after the procedure is, should be given if on as needed basis. If patient needs the painkiller, they should take them, otherwise should not be taken. Now again, the, some other steps of the post-operative care, nasal irrigations, uh, no, uh, nasal irrigation by the saline uh, are started after one week post-operatively to remove any clots, crust and secretions continued once or twice a day for one week. So started after one week, continue for one week. So after seven days, nasal uh, suctions or irrigation should be started with saline. If after the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, after the surgery, if there is any uh, crust, uh, blood, clots, secretions, that we can remove them by the nasal saline irrigations. And it should continue for about a week. Then steroid nasal sprays uh, require in cases of nasal allergies or those operated for nasal polyps, we should give them the nasal steroid sprays. Next, the complications of the uh, procedure, major complications are uh, orbital hemorrhage. Bleeding from the eye can occur. So orbital hemorrhage is the, these are some major complications that can occur. Orbital hemorrhage, loss of vision or blindness as a result of the orbital hemorrhage, diplopia, double vision, uh, cerebrospinal fluid leak as a result of hemorrhage, as a result of injury, there can be leakage of cerebrospinal fluid, uh, which is the major complication, CSF rhinorrhea. Uh, meningitis can occur if the infection reaches the meninges. Then we have brain abscess. Massive hemorrhage requiring blood transfusion, intracranial hemorrhage and direct brain trauma, anosmia, loss of smell, injury to internal carotid artery in sphenoid sinus, injury to nasolacrimal duct and epiphora, 
and the death can also occur as a result of the complication because of all these effects massive hemorrhages can occur brain abscesses can develop meningitis can develop and there is injury to internal carotid artery can occur sometimes these complications can cause death that's why they are major complications not the minor complications major complications of the uh, endoscopic sinus surgery so risk and benefits should always be assessed if the benefits are more than the risk then we should go for it otherwise there are chances that might be uh, major complications can occur some minor complications are periorbital ecchymosis, uh, darkish, uh, uh, blackish discoloration of the uh, area around the eyes, periorbital ecchymosis, periorbital emphysema, uh, post-operative epistaxis, bleeding from the nose, post-operative infection, rhinitis or sinusitis, adhesions, stenosis of maxillary or frontal sinus opening, uh, exacerbation of asthma, hyposmia, and dental pain. So these are some minor complications associated with the uh, sinus surgery procedure, but we have some major complications. We talked about them again. There are some complications associated with the procedure, so it should be performed very carefully under the strict supervision of experts, otherwise should not be performed. So that was all about section 2. Thank you for watching scardia.com.